Alright, so the variance formula um, looks something like this. So um, we'll just deal with the population <coughs> variance formula for now. So you sum up um, each observation minus the mean and you square it divided by n. Okay, so this might look like it's a bit of a hassle to remember, but it's actually quite intuitive. So for example, suppose we're looking at some grades. Okay, so suppose we have two tutors and they um, and they both uh, record down their students grades okay so the first one is Sam's class and Sam's students um, this first student scored 80 second one scored 90 and second one scored 70 um, in the final exam okay and we take the average and you'll find that Sam's students average grade of 80 okay and similarly uh, we look at Sarah's class okay and so Sarah's Sarah's students, uh, maybe I should write these in blue, Sarah's students score 80, 90, 70, 81, and 79, and 79. And so again, their average is also 80, okay? So the averages are the same, but, you know, the question is, who's a more consistent tutor, okay? Um, whose grades are closer, you know, whose grades exhibit less spread or more spread, okay? So, yes, have the same mean, but the distribution might look different in terms of variance. So the first thing we want to look at is, um, is, well, variance from what? The spread from what? There must be a benchmark that we're comparing these grades to. So the spread from what? And a basic, um, you know, the, the first thing that should pop into your mind, well, maybe it's a spread from the mean. Okay, so what we might want to look at is how far is each observation from the mean. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say 80 minus the mean, that equals 0. 90 minus the mean gives me 10. 70 minus the mean gives me negative 10. Okay. And I'm going to do the same for Sarah as well. Okay, So 80 minus her mean gives me 0. 90 minus the mean gives me 10. Negative 10, 1, and negative 1. Great. So now the natural intuition from here would be to, well, we have all the spreads for individual observations. Why don't we sum them up to see what's the total spread for Sam and the total spread for Sarah? Okay. But you can see that if you sum this up, you get 0 plus 10 plus negative 10, you'll get 0. And again, you'll also get 0 here. Okay. And that happens because your negative deviations are cancelling out your positive deviations. Okay. And they cancel out perfectly until you get 0. So how we can fix that is we make it, if we make everything positive. So, so to make it so negatives and positives don't cancel out, what do we square everything? Okay, and then we sum them up to see which class has more spread. Okay, which classroom has more spread in their grades? But it's also not fair if we sum them up and compare them, because Sam only has three terms to sum up. Sarah has five terms to sum up, right? So how can we come? So how can we overcome this? Well, we can come overcome this by taking the average. We take the average sort of deviation. We take the average deviation here. Because if we sum them up, it's not fair. There's only three terms here, and there are five terms in here. So what is it? So we've taken each observation minus the mean. We had to square them so negative and positive deviations don't cancel each other out. And we had to take the average because we have to recognize the fact that one sort of population here has less observations than another population here. And that is the variance formula. Oh, and we sum that up. Okay. And that's the variance formula. I hope this helped.